Now, South Korea says its neighbours, North Korea, have moved a long-range rocket to its northwestern launch site this coming as President Obama arrives in South Korea ahead of a summit on nuclear security. He's visited the demilitarized zone, which divides the Korean peninsula, has done since the war, into North and South. Well, James Boys is Professor of International Political Studies at the American International University, and he's alongside me. James, welcome to you. Morning, Mark. Um, the, uh, the, some of the scenes we see on that demilitarized zone are almost beyond parody. And were it not so serious, we could stand back and, and take the mickey a little bit. You know, Christmas trees go up and the North Koreans uh, are incandescent. The world's biggest flag flies on the northern side. I mean, it's panto stuff, but jolly serious. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's very few places left in the world anymore uh, after the end of the Cold War where one side is quite literally eyeball to eyeball with the other. We see from the photographs here, and I'm actually delighted that Sky are carrying these images because so many of the images here are, are very close in on the president. <coughs> and behind bulletproof think, glass. And, and miss out the fact that he's standing there behind mm. six inches of bulletproof glass because he is only a, a matter of yards from the North Korean border on the DMZ zone, a two-and-a-half-mile stretch. You're calling it DMZ as well. I've already been ticked off today. Sorry. DMZ. DMZ. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do you do work for an American university. I spend university. too much time <laughs> in Americans, absolutely. But you've got 28,000 American troops on the Korean peninsula there. It's also important to recognise that this trip is a, as much about domestic as it is about international politics, because of, for all concerned, you've got the North Koreans, you've got a new leader there. They're trying to, uh, uh, you know, rally around the new leader. And let's not forget Barack Obama for all his uh, travelling around the world, he's up for re-election in November. So a lot about this is about positioning himself as a commander-in-chief, yeah. distancing himself from the, uh, the Republican Party, and getting ready very much to sort of present himself as a, as a, a global leader, I suppose. I spent some time on an American army base yeah. uh, when I was embedded with the Americans, and they, it's a big part of their rotational posting, South Korea. You, people don't understand how mm -hmm. big the military commitment that America has Absolutely. in South Korea. It's massive. Tens of thousands of troops are there. Yeah. 28,000 troops on the North Korean peninsula, on the Korean peninsula there. Uh, so it's a huge uh, commitment by the Americans there. You know, yeah. the, only, the only thing it could be comparable to maybe would be, you know, to West Berlin in the Cold War, yeah. effectively. Right. So there's an awful lot of parallels there, I think. Uh, uh, and what's different with uh, the Cold War, if you like, is that generally when you were dealing with the Soviets, there was a, a, a rational rule book that went with it. With the North Koreans, it's the loony bin. Well, you also had conversation. You had dialogue there. You know, whatever the situation with the, with the Soviets, you had a, a degree of, of, of dialogue. And I think the great problem with the North Koreans is that, as you rightly point out, it's, it's you know, Looney Tune you know, area, to quote Ronald Reagan almost. You've got a, uh, a series of leaders there that uh, really could come straight out of any, you know, great cartoon, effectively. Who knows uh, what on earth they're going to do next? They're launching missiles. The whole reason that Obama's out there is for a, a, a conference. In, the Japanese in have just worked up. They're about to buy a, new, a, a, a missile shield, aren't they? They're terrified, understandably. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. They're one of the, you know, the last few rogue regimes left in the world. So uh, Barack Obama, of course, has talked about a world free of nuclear weapons. He's going to come against a hell of a, uh, a barrier there in North Korea for that dream. OK, James Boyce, good to talk to you. DM said. Yeah, I remember that moving forward. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay. John's here. James. You're not still stumbling over that, are you? <laughs> Sorry. Um, talking